As Mark Twain said in 1674, you can't judge the PG-14 by how it looks or what you think it does. So today, I'm gonna show you a bunch of stuff that you are too judgmental to realize. Most of you out there, like myself, you get a guitar pedal and you kinda have this predisposed idea of what it can do, what it should do, and what you're gonna use it for. And in the case of certain pedals that are very versatile and have a wide range of sounds, that doesn't turn out very well because you never give those pedals a chance. And I think out of all the JHS pedals I've ever released and created, the Paul Gilbert Signature PG-14 Overdrive Distortion Fuzz is that. It does so many things that there's no way one singular demo could show it all. And it has the attachment of Paul Gilbert, a phenomenal, incredible guitar player, literally one of the best I've ever seen with my own eyes. You see that, you hear that, and there is a thing where you go, that's what it's for, to sound just like Paul Gilbert. That is true, but Actually, it does a whole lot more. So I'm gonna walk you through the basics of the circuit really quickly, and then I'm gonna show you other guitar sounds that you're gonna really love that you can do with this pedal that up until now you've judged because you're judgmental. Sick burn. The PG-14 we released at NAMM 2020. That was January of 2020, right before the plague hit the earth. There is a video called Who is Paul Gilbert? in which we release this, go watch it, it's really fun. And Paul displays exactly how he uses it and how you can use it to be like him. Well, the topology of this pedal is very interesting and unique, and it really comes from his tinnitus. So Paul has extreme hearing loss in certain frequencies. And when I started talking to him and we had this discussion of doing a signature circuit and a pedal, there was a certain thing he'd always searched for, which was versatility, and a certain push in different frequencies that had to do with his hearing. And what came to be is that this pedal was derived or concocted from two previous circuits that we have had here at JHS for a while, the Superbolt and the Haunting Mids. So when you look at the PG-14, this volume and tone and drive are technically the inner workings of the Super Bowl, which is a FET simulation of a tube amp. And this is important because I wanna get into how this character within the pedal can be pushed and manipulated to do different things. So you have that volume and the tone and the drive, and that's simulating a tube amp and how that reacts. And then you have this pushing the front of it. So this push control is the volume control of this. So you're pushing into this amp simulator, which is all analog, and you have the mids and the sweep control here. The mid frequency would be sweep on the haunting mids, and then mid is the mids control. So what you have is this all-in-one compacted unit that's combining these two recipes into one, and this is specifically adjusted with this tone circuit to find and hit those points at which his hearing loss had developed. And what ended up happening from this, I remember on the original breadboard being completely blown away at how versatile this pedal is because these two circuits combined, having an active mid EQ range pre-distortion or overdrive, it's crazy because most all overdrive pedals really are the same type of overdrive, the way they clip a waveform. And what sets things apart is the little minute differences in tone controls, input filtering, output filtering. And so when you have this much power in an EQ before that powerful and amp-like overdrive distortion circuit, it's incredibly versatile. So that's how this works. And let's start it off with my favorite sound that I discovered the moment I had the breadboard of this design, it blew me away. It is that Eric Johnson sound from, it's the era where he wore the Hendrix marching band jacket. Here's a picture of him on Austin City Limits. And it's just the sound of marshals that are dirty. This does a really good job at that in this context when you add the mid range. A fuzz face, 
a strat in which I will start the jam clean. And I'm gonna walk over and turn it up and you'll hear the fuzz happen. And I'm gonna use a Memory Man with the Vibrato, it's an older one. And let me just also say, I'm not Eric Johnson. There's no way on earth I would even get close, but I'll just give you that tonal thing that he does and you'll get the idea. Some of you can play like Eric Johnson and this is just showing you this does that sound really, really well. Check it out. jam this pedal uh, first of all you saw the volume control how it cleans up it's an incredible cleanup it's probably the best in the JHS line next to the crayon the fact that you can roll back from that amount of fuzz distortion and have a beautiful clean tone underneath that's something that a lot of people look for and at first glance you don't think this pedal would do that why would you and obviously that is a killer fuzz face into a martial tone that this kind of coaxes up. You have the volume on that jam was halfway, pushing the mids a little bit with the center frequency pretty much in the middle. The drive is almost all the way up and I'm pushing this part into it pretty hot. And that's where you hear this sagging. So Paul talks about this in his video, how he loves this pedal because as you start pushing it, the FETs in the drive section actually give up and sag just like a tube amp. Yeah! There was something about that, the amp, like that was just suffering because it just couldn't be like, I can't handle that. That was that was attractive. You know, if you can get that out of out of the you know the magic that you do with yeah. all the stuff that, that goes yeah. into a yeah. pedal, but dialable so it sounds sounds good in, in a real you know rock and roll situation. That'd be nice. So you have the cleanup, you have the rectifier tube sag of a tube amp and all these controls. And then I had the tone backwards, like kind of back around, what is that, three o'clock? No, I can't tell time, six. So that's 10 o'clock, not three o'clock. Let's go to the next jam. The next thing I'm gonna do is play grunge on the PG-14. Um, before I do that though, I actually need to call Paul. I think that we signed there might be some tension there and not playing grunge on his pedal. So let me call him up on speakerphone. Hello, this is Paul. Hey, it's Josh. Josh, what's happening? Not much, man. I uh, just got some questions uh, for you. Really, it's a question. Do you mind if I play grunge or shoegaze on your pedal? I, I know there was some fighting about this back, in, back when we released it, but I feel like we've gotten through that. Yeah. Well... Well, first of all, I suppose there's a shoe on it. True. So you, it, that has to qualify it for, for shoe gaze. For grunge, really, you can use the same setting as you would for the for the fast single note stuff. All you have to do is play a chord that has a third in it, like your regular open E chords, got the G sharp. In, you know, the thirds fight everything. So as soon as you throw a third in there, it's, it's going to be grungy. So that's not, that's not a challenge. Um, Okay, so give that a shot. I, the one thing, though, if you do play grunge, I think it voids the warranty, so look out for that. And uh, thanks for asking. Yeah, no problem. And thanks, thanks for, uh, thanks for understanding. You know. Right. Later on. Okay. So uh, yeah, let's let's play some Nirvana sounding stuff now that Paul's let me do that. <laughs>
you've heard us not at all play a version of Drain You off of Nevermind, uh, let me explain what I was going for there. So this pedal can do literally almost any distortion sound. So the idea with Nevermind is there is some mystery to what actually happened on the record, but we know there's a mixture of some AC30 amps there, there's some cleaner amps in the studio, and then we know that Kurt was using the DS1 through that entire record. And we also know because of Butch Vig's interviews over the years and some comments, there's a rat involved probably in this song. So speculation aside, one thing we do know is that Nevermind has stacked guitar tracking where you you pass through and do your power chord riffs and then you do it again with a slightly different tone and you pan those hard left and right. So I actually did that on this. <laughs> And for the first setting, to kind of go for a DS1, I have the volume pushed really loud so that it's breaking my amp up, which is how you should use a DS1. I also have the mid almost all the way up, the mid frequency and tone all the way up. So that's a lot of treble and brightness because DS1. That's what sounds good about the circuit. The push is really low. So this part of this is barely pushing into it at all and then you have the drive about halfway. So that's on one side of it. What what side did we pan that to? The first take. The left one. The left side. So if you're in your headphones, the left side is the DS1 faux pass. And then on the rat side, what I'm wanting to do here is go opposite of the thinner, brighter uh, DS1 with a, kind of a more complex or chunky sounding rat tone. So for this chunky rat tone, that's a cool, that's a cool descriptor. Uh, the volume is up. I have the mid frequency back because a rat doesn't have a ton of mids in certain positions. Drive is up, a little more push. The mid frequency is backed up some and tone is backed off. And so you put those together and it's huge. And I think it pretty much nails that sound. And then you heard the small clone. I felt good. It felt really good to play grunge on this. Uh, we should do some shoegaze. He permitted this, so I feel totally fine playing shoegaze on this pedal against his wishes. It's kind of his wishes, though, because he said it could. You get the point. shoe gaze it was kind of like sock gaze like it wasn't the full shoes it was yeah it was kind of there's a tiny bit of like the Coldplay live record from like way back and then there's like the slow dives there you get the idea and there's a little bit of friday night lights what's the saying full eyes full hearts can't lose yeah full eyes full hearts can't lose with the pg-14 it's clear eyes full Whatever. Oh, Whatever. Uh, Whatever. Uh, so to get that sound and to demonstrate it visually here, it's it's a phenomenal low gain drive pedal. Again, you would not associate this with low gain always because Paul plays very high gain. You even heard me using it high gain. This is a phenomenal edge of breakup amp simulation type pedal. So the drive is low, the push is low. 
mids is pulled back some. The frequency is kind of in the upper high mids. Tone is fairly bright, but still back. And then the volume is kind of at halfway. It's a great sound, added the three series delay. I think that some of my favorite overdrive tones within this collection of pedals in this room, sometimes more than often, or more than I'd like to admit, come from distortion pedals. Um, and that's a valuable lesson here. So really great normal light gain overdrive tone. I would dare to say it's transparent. What? On this next jam, uh, I'm gonna play some slide. I do wanna rep this guitar. It's the Paul Gilbert Signature. It's the FRM 300. You could grab this right now at like Sweetwater or from any other place on the internet. It's super cool. It's like a very crazy, it's an offset. I, no, it's not. I don't know what it is. No one knows what it is. It's a crazy, crazy guitar, but yeah, it, I love it. Paul has these modified things that he does where he installs magnets and it holds his metal slides. I use glass slides, so that's not helpful to me. And that really burdened me in this. So Paul, if you're watching, which I know you will watch this, at least I hope you will watch this. Magnets don't work on glass, so what? what's for me? What can you do for me? Okay, we'll have that conversation later. I'm gonna play some slide, like a swamp, stanky, angry, bluesy, I don't know, like if Jack White did like a Nissan truck commercial for the Tennessee Titans or something. And I'll use the three series delay. And I'll make the PG-14 sound like a small, broken, Valco Supro Gretsch amp. Take a look at this new Nissan FJM 4006 series model overlanding skull crusher of a truck. This is a truck that God is scared of. Truck, yeah. Batman has a bat car because he's too sissy to drive our truck. You can put all the other trucks in the back of our truck and dump them in the dump truck. This is a truck for a man, not a sissy. Pick it up right now at your local Toyota, Nissan, Ford, Mitsubishi dealer. Located in the Midwest. Did we mention this truck is tough? It's too tough for you. You don't even need to buy it. You can't drive a truck. Look at your car. Go out in your driveway, stare at your car. You don't even have a car. And if you ride a bicycle, turn your TV off because you're a sissy. This is a Nissan FJM 4078.4 Quadra Ton Gooseneck Lifting Power Ski Pulling Truck of the Year Award. Truck, yeah. Now that you've seen these jams and realized how judgmental you are, you can apologize in the comments to me and to Paul Gilbert and honestly the rest of the world. And the world will come to these comments and they'll look at your comment about how you were wrong and judgmental. And then the world can judge you. And I think that's the circle of life. When you watch The Lion King, that's what the song's really about. How you judge other people and then they judge you after you've realized you were judged and then they get judged later. And millions of years later, we've just judged each other the entire time. And that's why life is satisfying. It's not because we accomplish things or actually achieve anything. It's because we judged each other. Let's go to record time. What was that? <laughs> it's, the, it's the word salad. Today's record time is brought to you by Nirvana Bleach from 1989. If we're gonna talk grunge, you gotta start right here. This is a really cool record. I revisited it a couple weeks ago, kind of going through this Kurt Cobain phase and it's really cool. It's a budget record that was massively influential and not appreciated as much as Nevermind, obviously, but I think it's equally important to the evolution of what was happening with guitar, the gear being used, and the people making music at the time. My favorite song is about a girl because it shows that Kurt Cobain was always writing pop music. Um, he took a lot of hate from some of the crowds over his ability to 
make grunge and post-punk catchy and poppy, but he was brilliant at it. Uh, this is much more raw than something like Nevermind. Some of the songs you might not like at all if you think you like Nirvana and haven't heard this, but listen to About a Girl. Negative Creep's really cool. School is great as well. Yeah, check it out. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you see how versatile and amazing the PG-14 is. I believe there are a lot of you out there looking for different flavors of overdrive or single pedals that can cover a lot of ground for a lot of situations. So check it out, try one at your local dealer. Uh, if you like this episode, hit like, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. And in the description below is a link to BandLab. You can jam with us on every one of these jams. That's it. Have a wonderful day and go listen to some Paul Gilbert. Like tons of it all day, all night, all day tomorrow, the next day. Just listen to it forever. That's all you're allowed to listen to. Nothing else. Throw all your music away.